If you wake up one day and you have a headache, what do you do? You go, you take a pill of ibuprofen, paracetamol, one gram, 500 milligrams, you take it, it's gone, the pain, good. Did you know that only 3% of the medical, of the drug actually reach the pain? The rest of the paracetamol or the ibuprofen is actually destroyed by the human body. It's natural, it's normal, okay? When we think about paracetamol or some things like that, we don't care that much. But if we change the scenario, and we are talking about chemotherapy treatments, then we really have a problem. At this point, when you go to, when you go, when a, per, a person has to go to chemotherapy treatments, they are receiving a huge amount of drug concentrations. And that's why, <clears throat> because obviously the same, like the paracetamol, uh, the, hum the human body is made to destroy it, these natural compounds. But the problem in the chemotherapy drugs is that the drugs not only target the cancer cells, but actually destroy every single life cells that you have in your body. And that's why we have secondary effects in the chemotherapy treatments. That's why we lose our hair, that's why we actually lose our immune system, which is the one that has to fight against the cancer cells. So we do have a problem, okay? So let's imagine that in the future, you can have small, very small, tiny uh, structure at the nano level, which I remember to you, the nano is one billion part of a meter, so it's very, very tiny, <laughs> that we can actually add the drugs on that nanostructure. We can cover the nanostructure and the drugs with something that protects to be degraded, and we can make it to only go to cancer cells, to only target and go in cancer cells. So then we overcome the problem. So basically, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, at this point, sometimes people think that my project is very ambitious, and I have to recognize it has been. And I will, face, I will explain to the, uh, how I actually managed to have that structure there. It's about between 50 nanometers length, two nanometers diameter. I have several, basically one or two chemotherapy drugs on top of it, and I wrap it with DNA to make it protective. But before that, I would like to remind you something very cool. I mean, when we think about our human body and we want to know, we were thinking about the nano, you must know that we have plenty of nanostructures in our human body. We are not inventing something really new. If you think about at the nano world, what we have, we have some viruses, we have proteins, we have DNA, atoms, glucose, collagen, all, if you think about it, all of the targets of the actual medicine are nano level. So designing nanostructure allowed us to, to, see, to target a specific protein, a specific structure, really, really in a, interacting in the same size. So nanotechnology has given me uh, eyes to visualize uh, the nanostructures that we have in our human body in a really high resolution. So by the way, I'm a biologist based in the physics department. So when I moved to the physics department and I did some nanotechnology and I was able to visualize my molecule, I've been working with the DNA, the whole entire DNA molecule for more than 20 years. Suddenly I saw at the high resolution one molecule with a native structure, obviously, and in solution. So when I saw this, is where a biologist stayed in the physics department. So I have <coughs> the possibility to visualize all of the targets that, <coughs> sorry, that we are just playing with the medicines. But nanotechnology has actually given us something even cooler than just visualization. We have right now, right now methodology that allowed us to make our own nanostructures. From very big structures, we can break it down to nano level, or we can actually place atom by atom together and get the nanostructure with the shape, the shape and the size that we want. As soon as we start <coughs> working with nano, a lot of my friends and myself, and all the nano, but thank you, a lot of the people working with nano, sorry, just a second. But <coughs> What we actually find, and this is why nanotechnology is an emerging technology, is that all the materials at the nano level have completely different properties than themselves at macro level or atomic level. So for instance, copper, which you always find like wires of copper you can twist around, it's harder than diamond at nano level. Gold it doesn't look yellow anymore, it's red. All the properties change. So that's why we feel that we're actually working with nano. We have gave a three dimension uh, point of the periodic table. This is like a periodic table where we actually study when we were kids. So you have the feeling that depending on the shape and the size of the nanostructure, you can get any of the properties that you want. Unfortunately, we only, want, we only know 10% of them, so there's a lot of new materials coming along. And 
What I wanted to do is what I said to the beginning. I want to design a, nano, a smart nano drug delivery system that targets cancer cells. Okay, so when I start this project, I have no idea about nano. So I started working on that, and the best thing to work and learn is to make it your own nanostructures. So I look at the literature, what could be the best nanostructures to select. So I select four of them, and it doesn't really matter if were carbon nanotubes, silver nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles. I always have a problem, and that was it. The problem is, after you make the nanostructures, you have probably, depending on which ones, about from minutes to one week to actually work. The nanostructures are very unstable, especially when you have to put them into liquid. I do uh, nanomedicine. I work with things that are <coughs> on the human body, and now the human body is made 80% of water, so I have to put things on liquid. We have to design nanomedicines that will go on the bloodstream. So how I can actually work with some nanostructures that actually they are all the time aggregated, precipitated, coagulated, terrible. So at the beginning, I thought, like, okay, man, Sonia, you should be better, okay? I always thought, like, you have to do things better, blah, blah, blah. So I started talking to people, researchers, companies, and I realized I was not the only one. Actually, this happens all the time. And this is one of the problems that is holding back our field, because it's very difficult to scale up and do nanostructures that you can work for, like, a couple of years. And it's very difficult for companies making nanostructures <coughs> to scale up and do mass production of that. That's why nano is still at the age of starting. So what I thought, OK, wait a second. I may have a solution. So after 20 years working with the DNA structure, I was pretty good in the lab to know how to twist around the, the DNA, how to make knots, entanglements. So I thought, OK, well, this is one of the things that I do in the lab in vitro, so I twist the DNA. I thought, what about if I do this twisting in the DNA in the presence of the carbon nanotubes on the hop, on the hop, OK, look in the conditions that the DNA will wrap, during the process, the DNA will wrap the carbon nanotube. I know that the DNA is very soluble. I know all of about it, so that's what I tried. And I was very lucky. It was a lot of thinking and probably a couple of experiments. So you can see on the top, all the nanostructures without the DNA were all untangled and aggregated. And you can see how beautiful they are after you wrap with the DNA. These nanostructures, this nano-hybrid, as I call it, they are more just, they are actually a perfect tool for work to me right now because they are stable for more than two years in different physiological mediums. So I can work in organic, water, serum, all the mediums that I need. And they are stable at 4 degrees, 37, 30. You cannot go up to 42. That's the, the maximum that you can do. You can freeze dry. You can make powder on that. So they are totally stable. Now, the coolest part of this is that this is reversibility. So what it means, a lot of the properties that we're looking on the nanostructure, it lands on the surface. If you add something on the surface to make them soluble and stable, and you cannot get it out, then you don't have any more the nanostructure surface that you need. And I've seen a lot of the publication that goes on that kind of level, but I thought, no, no, I need to have the surface of the nanotube. Because I, what I have right now is the following. I have a carbon nanotube. On, sur on the surface, I have the chemotherapy drugs and the DNA. If I cannot remove the DNA outside, I mean, what kind of de delivery is this? So this is a really good point. This is the, I can show you here how in vitro in the lab you can remove the DNA back to the nanotubes, back to showing the, the drug. So it's uh, reversible and it's extremely, extremely easy to do it. So the whole process is actually cheap, fast, and really fun to make it. But the best thing is that as I designed it, I was thinking that this reversibility could happen when the nanostructure reaches the inside the cell. So the conditions to make the DNA unwrap is actually the conditions that this nanostructure found inside the cancer cells. So the carbon nanotube with the drugs wouldn't be able to cross the cell membrane. I have to remember at this point that cancer cells do have lots of difference from normal cells, and one of the targets I have right now is the permeability. Cancer cells are more permeable than normal cells, and this difference allowed the DNA carbon nanotube go inside the cell. When it's inside the cell, it opens and wraps and liberates the drugs in the tumor cell. In this type of, in this slide, I want to summarize all the in vivo data we have. So we are able now, uh, working with one type of cancer cell, in this case it's a small lung cancer cells, we achieved to reduce from 100% live cancer cells to 2% in 24 hours. So it's actually working. However, 
I wanted to do it something universal. I want to do something that does not depend on the type of, of tumor, that actually something that works at the very early stage of the tumor formation, where we're talking about one or two cells or three cells, okay? So basically, uh, these are the cartoons of the three different generations that I have designed. In the last one, which I, in the lab we have developed now, a way to touch very strong on the DNA, whatever we want. So this, uh, blue rectangles are, uh, are molecules that recognize proteins on this cancer cell membrane. So we know that the cancer cells do have different permeability, they have different compositions of proteins, so we can target all of these. So in my lab, as a biologist, nano, working, we work in kind of parallel. We actually study a lot the cancer cells, the biology of the cancer cells, and we want to know, we were actually interrogated from the chemical, physical, mechanical properties, what are the difference from normal cells at the very early stage. And you, now I'm gonna tell you something even more ambitious. So the aim of this project that maybe happens in 20 years, okay, hopefully I can be a little bit faster, is to have a pill made of these carbon nanotubes. Something that you can take every single year, you don't care, just take the pill and forget about it. So as soon as you have one single cancer cell or maybe two, these nanotubes will actually target them and destroy them together with your immune system. So it will be one way to be safe before the cancer gets even to the tumor level. I told you it's ambitious, eh? However, <laughs> I, I'm doing my best at this point. One of the things that I find that is like, well, when I was looking at how this way of wrapping the DNA along the carbon nanotube, I thought like, Sonia, this is not just gonna be carbon nanotube, the, the mechanism behind, can actually wrap every single thing. So I try spherical, uh, nanowires from carbon, silver, gold, all kind of nanoshells. And actually you can, all of them, you can wrap with the DNA around. You can make complexes. You can actually uh, keep them alive. I keep them safe for more than two years. So I actually really hope that this will help, especially to reduce the price of the nanostructure because every time that I buy them now, I, they make them for me. So if I can actually help on the, on the community of in the industry to make them stable so they can actually make some mass production of nanostructures. And because it's universal and you can actually do all kind of nanostructures with the DNA, one of the novel projects that I have is that we are now can target as the same, following the same philosophy that cancer, we can target other cells, such as, for instance, bacteria. So we are developing a new antibiotic, novel antibiotics. <clears throat> and to finish, I've been very fast, yeah. that biologists, we working in medicine, we always have in mind that human health is not just about having good medicine, good health care. It's about having a friendly and healthy environmental. We're working right now, and due to this, diverse, to this universality of the nanostructures, we have projects to actually work on water purification and uh, gas, and afraid gas removal, like methane. Thank you very much. That's all. <laughs> um, Sonia, amazing work, and kind Thank of very you. complicated work to explain in 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the research you're doing has <coughs> so many implications in healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, so give us a couple of examples of how you see this sort of work um, affecting other aspects of well-being and healthcare in the, maybe the next 10 years. Other than the cancer research or cancer? Yeah, I mean, it, presumably these techniques well, can be used in... Well, I was thinking the other day, like, I mean, I've been focused so much on the cancer, but I can actually add paracetamol, ibuprofen. Insulin. Can we actually, this could be like a new pill. I mean, remember when we have first injections, then the pill arrives. So that could be another way, another generation of how to deliver the product, the, the medicines to the body. Because we can actually as well target the part of the body. So it's not only just on drug delivery for cancer cells. We can actually make the delivery of whatever we need. And what is it that maybe is slowing us down? Oh. What would you well, like to solve? What's the, the well, big challenge? I mean, I work in the university, so basically, I'm working with public funding, and we are not in a very good economical situation, so this is holding quite a lot. Funding is very difficult. 80% of my time I spend in looking for funding, more than actually doing experiments. That's one of the problems. 
And another problem is, as I say, I mean, it's very difficult to make the nanostructures st stable. So once we sort out this, it's going to be moving forward. And the other thing that this makes very slow is that I have to work with, I have to learn physics, chemistry, biology, math. This is a very interdisciplinary research. And there's a very few people that we actually feel curious on. We don't feel scared to be out of our comfort zone. And, but it's now the next generation that they will be more interdisciplinary. So I think that the breakthroughs in nanomedicine probably will have to wait for one generation more. Maybe in the networking break, we can pair you up with a venture capitalist oh, and create, I love a, that. create a billion dollar business. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you.